This one's all about landscaping. We'll be making hills, laying roads, even scratch building the odd bridge, but it's a long one. Get yourself a coffee and settle down. Hi, welcome back to Chatty Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Now, following a conversation at our Model Railway Club the other day, I just thought I'd let you know that subscribing is free. You don't have to pay, Peter. Right, let's go. Now, if we switch the clock back a few weeks, I built this um, incline section um, from Woodland Scenics out of their polystyrene risers. And I was planning on putting some kind of industrial unit over there in the corner. And across here, I was going to build some kind of a bridge. And as we look back, um, I first toyed with um, a, I think it was a beam and deck bridge. I also looked at using a girder bridge um, and even a bowstring bridge, but they all seem to be kind of over-engineered and to put a level crossing in here would be quite difficult. So what I thought I would do before we go down that avenue is look back at the landform because the land was here before the railway. So we've got this small river coming through here. And if I build a hillside that comes up from this river over here and then down towards the station, it would sort of run parallel with the hillside that's on the other side. So it sort of makes sense. That will allow me then to build the bridge that goes across to that area. But I think that area ought to be sort of farmland agricultural type area. And that will leave me with a single track bridge going across. I wouldn't necessarily need a level crossing because infrequently used yeah, farm access across railways, there's normally a phone. You phone through if there's a train or whatever, and you so open and close the gates as your vehicle passes through. So to me, that would make it much more interesting and get away from the flat, flat earth concept of everything being on one level. So it would put an extra dimension. It would look good as the trains come through there. Of course, there is an issue, and that is the room here and going around to the station is quite tight. So how can we get around that? Well, quite simply, earlier today, I just made this small fillet section out of a piece of ply and a bit of 2B1 or whatever it is. And if I just screw that into there, that will give me much more room now to build my hillside over here. The roadway can come around here and the bridge and everything else. So it sort of makes it much better. So what, where do you go from here? Well, what I thought I would do next is um, perhaps temporarily screw this in place, get some sheets of Sellotex out and see if we can um, make some kind of a hillside um, and see how it, uh, how it sort of develops and take it from there. So this is the material I intend to use. Um, we call it Celotex, which is just a trade name really, like calling vacuum cleaners hoovers. Um, this is actually made by Extra Therm and you use it in lofts, um, put it between joists and that sort of thing. It's obviously a, an insulation material. What I do with it is I peel the silver paper off and then I glue it down onto the surface and build it up and cut it with a carving knife. I've tried to cut it with a hot wire cutter before, but the fumes are dreadful and um, it's, it's, it's hard going. So I use one of Margaret's disused carving knives um, and like I say, just hack at it really. Um, it's always worth wearing these gloves um, because it is an irritant and if you're getting bits off then obviously you don't want to inhale them so a face mask is always useful. So what I shall intend to do I think is cut this up, lay this down into the first layer and see how we get on. It's really a case of a suck it and see really, it's just a case of building up if it looks right. Obviously I need some kind of a embankment around this side and it will just sort of end um, abruptly here. So let's peel this off and get stuck in with a knife. Now this large sheet is 75 millimetres or three inches in old money thick and it could be the ideal um, height to go across the tracks. So I might not need to build up on this anymore. However, it might be a so-and-so to try to cut this down due to the size. So the first thing I am going to do is cut it um, or mark it up around the rails 
so um, that I can get rid of the stuff that we certainly don't require and sort of pop it in and then start to slice it away outside where I can keep the mess down and then sweep it up later. Onward. Now as you can see I've cut it to its basic shape but I've also drawn a line along its length and what I shall do is just simply cut it um, along there in half outside to make it more manageable and I've also sort of drawn a line along here as the hill will rise up to the summit for want of a better term um, so we can, I can do these cuts outside and then and slowly bring them in try them take it out cut it and bring it back in without turning the studio into a sea of snow outside I'm fortunate I've got a, a leaf sucker thing and I can suck it all up and then all the waste there so onward well as you can see um, I've got on pretty well you wouldn't say that if you looked at the picnic table outside um, but there it is in place um, one mistake I may have made was by peeling off the silver paper on the underside allows it to flex and warp more so perhaps if I'd left that silver paper on and then glued that down onto um, that our plywood base it may have been a better idea I think the best thing to do now is to glue this lot in place and weight it down and then carry on the rest of the carving in situ because I'm not going to make so much of a mess now and I can, I'll have a better grasp of how the thing is shaping up. When you see all these undulations they're nothing to worry about really because it's going to get a, clast a plaster cloth laid over it to give it its hard shell and then on top of that I'll obviously use something like sculptor mould and then I do need to take it easy up here because that's where the road's going to go so it needs to be a rather more, um, what should we say, um, even road surface. Now quite understandably people always want to know what glue I'm using and this is Evo Sticks polyurethane wood glue. Um, there are loads of glues that are useful for this but what you've got to make sure is it doesn't melt the Celotex, that's the most important thing. So all I do is lay down a load of this and hopefully we'll be good to go. And I'll just use a, a knife to spread this around and then whack a load of weights on it. And hopefully that should be okay. Then once you push it in position, what I tend to do is then give it a squidge. Not too sure that's a real word. To get it to bed down. And then add some weights and give that a time to cure. And now turning the corner and heading into the homeward stretch, it really is just a case of playing jigsaws really. And then all we need to do then is once this is all glued down is to shape it so it runs down nicely. Well I think it's fair to say that there is a uh, stage one complete. Now it's just a case of clearing up the dreadful mess that I've made outside. Now while I'm waiting for all this stuff to dry and sort of so I can get on with the next stage of shaping it down I thought I'd seal my riverbed and for that I use something called flex paste from Woodland Scenics and you paint on a couple of coats and apparently it seals all the holes up so when you pour your resin in it's not going to go leaking through the boards um, it says it takes three coats and you have to leave it 20 minutes between coats but it's just something to put on now whilst I'm waiting for the rest to dry the trick of course is to make sure you get it into all the vulnerable areas. So I spent a great deal of time with a carving knife just levelling off and taking out the larger bumps and valleys in the Celotex. 
and as you can see here there's still lots of divots and bumps and all the rest of it but at the end of the day it's going to be landscape. There's the fillet section which obviously makes the layout that much bit wider and um, makes it more adaptable. You know, I'm quite pleased the way that's come on and then as we dip down towards the start of it you can see there's a few holes to be filled blah 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 but at the end of the day we're going to use the Woodland Scenics plaster cloth initially just to create a hard shell across the top. Now we're coming towards the end of the day now so now's the time to put a, a plaster shell on the top of this so it can dry overnight and what have we got? Well we've got plaster cloth um, item number C1203 from Woodland Scenics and it's basically a roll of plaster impregnate a roll of cloth impregnated with plaster and I have a, um, a paint roller tray as in you put your paint in there and you get your roller and all I'm going to do is drape the, the plaster cloth through there at the right length lay it onto the Celotex the right width and then you lay it bumpy side up um, then you smooth it with your hand and make sure it's on all quite straightforward so let's give it a go and just see how messy it is hence the change of clothing now the pack has one of those sort of cheesy type resealable, resealable seals so be careful when you cut the top edge off not to ruin the seal and here we have as you can see the plaster cloth and there's the bumpy side and there's the smooth side which is the bumpy side it's hard to, well to be perfectly honest it's very hard to tell I would say the inside is the bumpy side so here we're going to start with the first piece so I need to cut this to length and then as you work your way along you need to overlap by 50% so I suppose every little piece of um, Celotex then has two layers upon it so this is where I'll put the first piece I'm not going to overlap it down this edge um, because I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the retaining wall or whatever there so how do we do this well I think it couldn't be more straightforward really you just dip it into the water roll it through for a couple of seconds not too long because obviously the plaster will come off take it out drop it into place and then smooth it with your fingers to take out the bumps and then the plaster sort of bonds it all up don't worry about um, sort of wrinkles and stuff because when we coat this with sculptor mold all that kind of stuff will disappear anyway so there you go nice and sort of straightforward this stuff from Woodland Scenics I'm going to pull it to the edge and hopefully you can see as I run my fingers over it it gets rid of those sort of holes and the plaster then makes up the shell there we go so all you've got to do is do that several times loads of times in fact then hopefully you can see a little better this time we pull out the wrinkles and then as you smooth it hopefully you can see that the plaster then sort of smooths out and you get much more of a of a better bond and then in the morning this should be nice and hard quite simple really it's not a bad little product to be perfectly honest and that pack was £11.25 I believe well that was all done in what half an hour so it's a, a nice easy sort of evolution really you can see the lines where the overlaps take place but at the end of the day when we cover it with sculptor mold um, hopefully tomorrow then we'll get rid of that but we do need to plan exactly where the road's going to go because we need to make that nice and smooth sadly I did run out of, a, of um, plaster cloth there's a lesson there for everyone isn't it buy two packets and you'll never run out always keep one spare um, but uh, anyway we'll come back to you in the morning once this has hopefully gone rock solid well needs to say it's now the following day um, this has dried okay as you can see it's kind of pretty much rock solid and it's now time to turn to a 
um, what would you call it, a paper mache type product really, but it's, um, it's better, it's more manageable and it's harder. So this is Sculptor Mould and hopefully there should be a link to this in the Show More tab down below. And as you can see the remnants of one bag and I've got another. Um, it's mixed by uh, volume, that's uh, one part Sculptor Mould to two parts water, he said knowingly. Two parts Sculptor Mould to one part water. And all I do is measure it out in cupfuls, stir it up, and then as you're about to see, I then put it on with my hands. I don't use um, a trowel or anything, it just seems to go easier with your hands. Now the strange thing about this product is after sort of 15, 20, 25 minutes, depending on the temperature in the room and how wet you've made it, suddenly um, it, it sort of hardens, but you can then glaze over it with wet fingers and it goes very, very smooth, very quickly. And you don't want to miss that opportunity because otherwise, you know, it's, it's too rough. And hopefully I can show you in a bit. So here it is mixed up and the consistency to go for is that of cottage cheese, if you can sort of um, see what it's like from there. So now it's a case of slapping it on and then using your fingers to sort of, what do you say, knead it into position. So let's get messy. So as you'd expect, in case of slapping it on, because it obviously it will find all, your, all the gaps and the dips like any ordinary filler might. But um, you know where your sort of the larger dents are that haven't quite been covered by the Woodland Scenics bandage cloth. No, clearly I don't need to show every part of all this product, uh, this process. But if I just show you these first couple of feet, you'll get the idea. Okay, there's the first mix on, and what is it? I don't know, two and a half square feet, I suppose. So it's from here up to here, just in case you can't see. And that was one mix. It was two cupfuls of sculptor mould to one and a bit cupfuls of water. It gave it the right the cottage cheese consistency. Um, don't make it up in greater quantities than that. Otherwise, when it comes to rubbing this in a um, I don't know, 10 minutes time, quarter of an hour's time or whatever, then um, you know, you'll, you'll be on to the next section and you'll make a mess. So just do one section at a time, especially if it's your first time um, and get the hang of it. Next thing you need is um, with my container, I shall just put a drop of water in the bottom of that so I can wet my hand quite easily when it comes to rubbing it down. So all I want to do is just dip my hand in that water and I give this a rub and hopefully you can see that it kind of glazes. Obviously the more water you put on, the longer it's going to take to dry overnight. But um, you can feel it going down the dips. This bit here is still a bit too wet, but this stuff here is starting to go. So we'll give it another five or ten minutes. Right, let's see if we can do it now. And hopefully you can see now there is a glaze coming on it and it becomes much smoother. Well, as you'd expect, a couple of days have gone by and this is pretty much dry now. Um, so I'm going to paint it. Now, if you're going to cover it in static grass or whatever, I always recommend that you paint it um, either a dark green or a dark brown kind of colour because if you chip it, the white will shine through. And these bottles here, I buy, this is a 300 milliliter bottle from Hobbycraft and it's just brown. Um, I always get a couple, let's say, so I don't run out. And just whack a coat over there. Um, they're a pound a bottle. It's no real, no big shakes. So um, next time you're in Hobbycraft, or wherever you are, cheap children's sort of poster paints they are, um, whack a, a, paint, a coat of paint of this on it. I'm not too worried about the edge because the edge will be covered eventually when the layout nears completion with um, a board along the edge to mask all this and it'll all be painted matte black, similar to this fascia here. So let's whack a bit of paint on.
Nothing could be simpler than this, really, could it? Anyway, I'm sure you'll join me again in a few minutes. And as you'd expect, that doesn't take very long at all. It may need a second coat, um, but this will dry in next to no time. So, using a couple of plastic card eye beams, I thought would form the basis of my little bridge. So uh, they're long enough to cope with the span and obviously there'll be a little support structure either end. So now I need to make a bed um, to go between them. Usually takes about three strokes with a reasonable blade. And there we are. Now plastic card sheets tend to come in 13 inch lengths or 33 centimetres. And my eye beams are slightly longer. So what I've done is I've cut off a few strips and a few extra bits. And this is one mil um, plastic card. So what I thought I would do because I need sort of about two mil, two and a half mil to go in the gap of the eye beam. If I switch these around the other way and then glue them together like so, and then glue them then into the eye beams, then that should give me the strength, the strength of the structure to form the bed. So nice and simple, really just a little bit of polystyrene cement to, uh, Glue the two halves together. Nothing could be simpler really, could it? So we'll pop that one on there. That one on there. And that one on the end. Then hopefully... That'll bond in next to no time. And now, of course, I've given the right length for the eye beams. And now we'll just run a little bead along the length of the, of the eye beam. And then hopefully that should be our bed. Nice and snug. Now rather than these Pico type um, vertical riveted panels, I've recovered some um, scratch built panels from a, a previous construction. And I'm just going to glue these in position. It's a super glue, so it shouldn't take long to bond. It's just a case of keeping hold of it and making sure it's vertical whilst it does its magic. And then these uprights should give the bed its rigidity. Now before I go any further and spray this with a normal Halfords Grey Primer, I thought I would give it a reinforced look by adding some of this Plastrut number 90622 box section. And that would give it the look that it's constructed on a uh, steel beam and deck type construction. So if I glue those two there and then perhaps put three other sections in and by doing that I can hide this uh, join between the two bits of plastic card. Well, I seem to be having 
super glue issues so I've had to resort to cocktail sticks here because the nozzles are all jammed but we shall cope I'm sure so there's the one over the join between the two strips of plastic hard bed and that was two inches in from the end so once more on the other end I shall do the same. Don't forget to keep some debonder with you when you do this in case you do glue your fingers together. It can be somewhat embarrassing as well as painful. Right, so we let those dry and then give it a spray. Now using the Humbrol grey primer, it hides a multitude of sins and it leaves this in a condition ideally now for a bit of weathering and a bit of green moss and uh, that's uh, just the sort of agricultural bridge that I'm after and the reinforcing structures underneath do add a little bit of character to it. So there's our little bridge in place. And it doesn't take a, a rocket science to work out that with this hillside it's going to be on an agricultural basis. There will be a road coming through here which I shall put in as soon as um, the moisture comes out of the paint and of the sculptor mould from underneath because it's still um, rather moist let's say. So um, the, the, the remainder of the hillside over there you can see that there's a cardboard template. So all I'm going to do with that is lift that template off now and cut a piece of plywood to fit in the place and that will have a similar sculpture to this but what I'll try to do with that is always make it removable so if I want to change the scene I can get that piece of structure out um, modify it and pop it back in of course the main thing to do is not to damage the back scene so you can see the uh, the basics of the template so let's lift that out and make a piece of plywood that fits in that gap I've made five little wooden piers for the piece of landscape to sit on and if it fits okay then all I shall do is just glue these down with a little bit of Gorilla Glue in place so that piece of landscape will just naturally sit on top. So here's a couple of pieces of plywood bolted together. I do tend to over engineer things I'm afraid um, and it always looks bigger when it's away from the layout but as you can see to be able to take this off the layout and build it aside rather than trying to lean over, even if I'd you know, built this piece before that, it's always, a, it's always going to be a nuisance. So be able to take it away and do your trees and your foliage or whatever on a, on a bench is far easier. Anyway, so hopefully this should lay in there okay on top of those pieces of timber. And it sits in there just right. I mentioned I'd like to make it removable. Well, as it happens, there's a little gap here between this um, incline and I can lift the, this thing out. So if I leave that gap in there when I eventually put the retaining wall on and allow me to get something in there to lift it, I can get my fingers underneath it and then take it out to amend it, change it or whatever. Or even repair it, you never know. So that looks okay, so I shall take that out and then with those pieces of timber I shall just put some um, Gorilla Glue on the base of them and glue them in place and then that will always just sit over there. It's slightly proud because I'm still going to use the Woodland Scenics Foam track bed so I will need some sort of an air gap as it were um, between there and then it'll all be hidden to a certain extent by the retaining wall because that will be just behind it but I think that'll look good and as you can see the hill still rises up. So it's in keeping with the land form. It's now another day later and the hillside has a much better chance to dry. There is still some moisture um, in the other side, but this piece here is good to go. So what I wanted to do was actually to put in a road. Now there's obviously lots of options to putting in a road. You can just sort of paint it or I know mean, you can get this um, sort of like a paper tape that you glue down but as it's a little bit on the rough side because I wanted a, a sort of what you say a, a prototypical hillside I thought I would use um, some products I'd never come across before this is paving tape and it's used 
with smooth it, smooth it both by Woodland Scenics. This has obviously been in the shop some time, as you can see by the faded packet. And reading through the instructions, you've got to give it a good shake because obviously the contents settle um, and you mix it up with water. If you're going to do on an incline, there's less water, so um, you get a thicker mix kind of thing. And then the paving tape works as a barrier up both sides. You put the paving tape on the road um, and then pour the uh, smooth it in between and do it in sections going up. So I thought we would give this a little go. After all, what could possibly go wrong? Um, and I think that would be an easier way of doing things rather than just troweling on loads of filler and just hoping to get it right uh, sort of first time. So a little bit of a product review. That's Smooth It Road System and it's ST1452 and ST1455, both from Woodland Scenics. I can't remember exactly how much they cost. I think they were both around about 10 or 12 pounds. Anyway, we shall have a little go and see what it looks like. On the back of the packet, it's worth noting that it says on here how wide your road should be. And in HO scale, it says for a city, country roads, highways, sidewalks, it's like a pavement. Um, but for a country road, two and three quarter inches or a smidge under seven centimetres. So that's what we shall go for. It's a seven centimetre wide road just going up this hillside. It can't be that difficult, can it? Now, as you'd expect, the paving tape simply comes on a roll and also there is a small plastic spreader inside. So uh, we need to find the start of this and lay it up the hill. Now, it makes sense to me to mark it before we start. And so the edge of the road would be on this side here, which would give me a chance for a bit of fencing and a bit of hedging and a bit of static grass and the like. So if I just make a, a line down here, which will help me to put on the tape and seven centimeters, the good, uh, the guide said. So let's go for seven centimeters. Okay, now I've cut the two bits of tape to length and I shall just peel off the backing. It is quite sticky, as you'd expect. So I will whack this in place. Try and keep it straight on the line that I've drawn. It's very easy to see the undulations in the road now, now that's on. Now it's fair to say that I had a little rethink here because it's hard to know how much of the uh, filler is actually in there. So I thought I would extend it uh, around the top of the bend just in case I've actually made up more than I realise. Um, I've also inserted little dams here just in case it's too runny. So at least it'll kind of stop it going everywhere. But at the end of the day, it's only filler. I mean, how, how hard can it be? And if you make a mess of it, you can mop it up, dry it out and just simply start again. Well, here it is mixed up, um, two and a half to one. Um, I, I can't help but think at this stage that this is exactly the same as using draft excluder and a filler, and that you don't need to go to this expense. Um, but anyway, we shall see. So it says you, this should pour. Well, because I've gone for the thicker um, consistency, it's probably not going to pour because obviously this stuff doesn't need to run down the hill as it were. So let's just try and smooth it in and see, <laughs> smooth it, excuse the pun, and see how it looks. Well, actually it looks quite good. I'm sure some would spill on the outside as you can see. But it's not a bad method of achieving a level surface, is it really? Let's have a look. Yeah, that kind of does it, doesn't it? Looking at how little I'm actually laying down, 
I'm pleased that I did the uh, the extension around here. I've clearly made up far too much for these first two segments. And I need to pull out that, that little dam that I inserted to get rid of that. I suppose if you find that it's not thick enough, you could just double up the uh, depth of the of the tape, which would work fine, wouldn't it? And you can see where the high points of the road are. All right, let's take out the rest of those tapes. It says on the package it's got a working time of 15 minutes. But if you go to use this product, be careful how much you make up. It goes up a lot, it goes a lot further than you are going to realise, to be honest. Well, it might not look it on first uh, <laughs> first appearance, but actually, it's um, it's quite good. Actually, so I'm quite surprised. There's a little bit of spillage over the sides, as you can see, but to be perfectly honest, that scrapes off quite easily. Um, and I think you need to take it off because when you take the tape off um, after giving it the 24 hours curing time, then you're going to be left with a little ridge. It does say that you can sand it down with sandpaper, um, so uh, that's quite straightforward. Or, of course, if you're not happy with it because your base was that um, uneven, you could simply lay another layer of tape on top of this one and do the whole thing again. But um, I, I think it's actually, yeah, quite, quite reasonable, really. Yeah, for what it is. But, as I said, I can't help but thinking about draft excluder and ordinary filler. As long as your ordinary filler, of course, doesn't crack. Well, this video has actually taken four or five days to shoot, but the sculptor mould, the amount of water in it still isn't dry, and this room isn't particularly cold either. So just plan accordingly to give the, these, uh, these landscapes time to dry out. In a couple of weeks time we'll be back with another video and it will be finishing off this landscape so then we'll be moving to things like uh, coloured scatters, static grass, fences, hedges, trees, the farm buildings, all the infrastructure that's going to go into that area and of course finish the road and paint the road uh, into some more sensible tarmac colour. So I hope you can join me then. In the meantime, I'd like to thank those that make the channel possible. And that's the people who donate by PayPal and of course the patrons. And if you'd like to become one, there's the button. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free. And a video here and here. See you in a couple of weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.